your body is in a constant state of working. Okay. That's why it's called a cycle. I want us to talk about our reproductive health. So this is me saying that as a woman, even as a man, you need to pay attention to yourself. Pay attention to the patterns, the things that are, you're like, this thing. Mm. A lot of women who are creatives, if you look at yourself, you realize that your creative surge happens around your relation. Yes. Because what happens is the hormones that are being produced by your brain are at its peak there, LH and FSH. That woman, that lady out there, that husband or husband to be, you are irritable, mm. you are not in the mood to have a conversation, the whole world is annoying you. I feel like if people understand how this thing works, it, it makes life so much easier. Which one should I call you? Let's just stick to Abba okay. for the purposes of the podcast. Okay. <laughs> how are you? How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. How how was your day today? <sighs> My day. <laughs> today has been a fairly good day. Okay. As compared to yesterday. Today okay. was a good day. So my day my day has been good. Okay. okay, okay, that's, that's How's your great. Day my day has been very chill. I had a very tiring weekend, so like today, my day took off. I had a very slow morning, so I'm really good, prepped and gingered for this conversation. <laughs> awesome. So I'm curious to know, um, what is God teaching you in this season of your life? You know, I thought I had an answer to this question. <laughs> But I think in this season of my life, God is teaching me his love in various forms. Mm. He's teaching me his love in a way that corrects. Mm. He's teaching me his love in a way that protects. Mm. He's teaching me his love in a way that says no. He's teaching me in a lo his love in a way that says, yes, 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 you can have it. Take it. Mm. I feel like he's teaching me so many things right now, but the umbrella, it all falls under is his love. Mm. So in this season of my life, God is teaching me his love. And because he's teaching me his love, I cannot just take his love and not teach people his love. Mm -hmm. So I'm just being very mindful of every single thing that I'm doing in this season of my life as well, so that at least people feel God's love as well. So I think he's teaching me his love. I will not say he's showing me, mm -hmm. because you can just show somebody something, right? But he's teaching me his love mm. in so many different ways, forms, shapes. And because of that, I'm also trying my best to show his love mm. Mm. or teach his love to other people. I love that. Yes. I love that. Awesome. The love of God is so beautiful. Um, I think it's one of the things he's he's been teaching me as well. And it's, it's so beautiful to see how God can show you love um, directly and also through people. So I'm happy that you are, you are going you are going through. I think one thing that I know about the love of God is that when you understand it, it's easier for you to love other people. Yes. It's easier for you to love his children. Yes. Yes. And um, it's crazy you're seeing this because <laughs> one of the things, let's not even shift to the topic. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things um, God was teaching me around my birthday is I love you in spite of, mm. which is so profound in terms of even our human relationships yep. because your person will flop one, two, three, and you're like, I'm done, I'm done. I'm done. Like yeah. this person, I will not be your friend again. Mm -hmm, da, da, da. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But God loves us in spite, in spite of, of yeah. all the things that we do, mm -hmm. all our flaws. And we are all heavily flawed. Very, <laughs> very. So um, I'm happy. I'm really happy that yeah, that is what God is teaching you in this season. Yes. 
I want you to tell me a bit about what you do professionally, and that will be like the the base for our conversation. Okay. So I'm a nutritionist, mm. and in very simple terms, I help people live a healthier life. Mm-hmm. So it can be through your diet, basically through your diet, mm. but um, along the lines of along the way, sorry, along the years, mm-hmm. I found ways to incorporate other things because I realized that living a healthier life, even though your diet is a major part of it, it goes beyond your diet. So now I'm a bit more interested in, are you sleeping properly? Are you stressed? What is happening to you? Mm-hmm. Um, I've taken it as total wellness. So I help people live a healthier life. Mm-hmm. That is what I do. I'm a nutritionist. Okay. I help people live a healthier life. That's great. Um, I remember there was a time I, I wanted to, we had a conversation and you explained the concepts of cortisol levels to me. And that, like, I love how you make things stick. Mm. Because when I understand the science behind it, it's easier yeah. for me to, like, live or implement the things. Yeah. Not just being told, sleep better, you know, get off the screens and, you know, get into nature mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, all of that. Mm-hmm. Which is one of the things you told me, like, your work is always, you're always behind screens. screens. And so don't go for activities like that, it's like watching a movie. That would not I- relax you, would it? And I like I was like, oh my god, it makes so much sense. So thank you for that. All the people who want proper go f- go and book a, cons- a consultation <laughs> with me. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I want us to talk about our reproductive health, okay. which is also again you gave me that insight. I think this was in twenty twenty one. It was before that. Before that, I year. think it was before that. I think it was before. It was. Definitely before 2021. Wow. Because I was still I was still back home then. So it was definitely before 2021. So I'm sure maybe late 2020. Yes. yes. Probably. Yes. So that has it really enlightened me. So I was like, Abba, you need to come I know. and let's have this conversation so that it helps that woman, that lady out there, that husband or husband to be, mm-hmm. because it's I feel like if people understand how this thing works, it it makes life so much easier, right? So I want you to tell me, right, the different phases of our menstrual cycle. I don't know if I'm using the right terms. And what it does to our body, what, like... Okay. Yeah. So every woman... Mm -hmm. So far as you're of reproductive age, you have a period every month. Mm -hmm. And before you get your period, so many things are happening Mm -hmm. to your body. Mm -hmm. The period is just one part of it. Mm -hmm. And growing up, we all thought it was just menstruation. Mm -hmm. But before you get to menstruation, something is happening. Mm -hmm. So let's take, let's start with menstruation because that's what everybody knows. So Mm -hmm. menstruation is the menstrual cycle. Mm -hmm. It's um, when you have your period, you shed the lining of your uterus, Mm -hmm. you wear your pad, all of those things. Mm -hmm. It would last anywhere from three to eight days, depending on your age, your weight, genes, Mm -hmm. what you eat, where you live, all of those things. Mm -hmm. After you have your period, Mm -hmm. what what you saw in your pad from your period that just ended was the shedding of the walls of your uterus and an egg that didn't fertilize. Mm -hmm. So your body is in a constant state of working. Okay. That's why it's called a cycle. Mm. A phase doesn't break for another phase to continue. Okay. It's it's always on. It's always, always mm. on. Mm. So whilst you are menstruating, your body is preparing for ovulation. Okay. So the period between menstruation and ovulation is what we would call the follicular phase. Mm. Ideally, the follicular phase will start from your menstrual phase, but I just want it to be distinct for the purposes of the podcast. Yes. So everybody understands. So Mm -hmm. you have the first few days of your cycle when you're bleeding, Mm -hmm. menstrual phase. Mm. Then you have the phase between the menstrual phase and when your body releases an egg. Okay. 
known as the follicular phase. Okay. So that phase, your body is preparing to release an egg. Okay. Some hormones found in the brain would start rising, telling the hormones found in your sex organs that we need to work. Mm-hmm. Let's release an egg. Okay. This girl is ready. She's ready to be a mummy. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so let's 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 do this. Let's release an egg. Then you have ovulation. Okay. So ovulation happens. It's a very quick window. Mm. You are not ovulating for three to eight days like the way you are menstruating. It's a very quick window. Mm. But even though it's a quick window of a couple of hours, you are most fertile around there. So we would say ovulation lasts about a day to three just because of how fertile you are around that time. Okay. If the egg doesn't get fertilized, mm-hmm. it disintegrates, mm-hmm. it sheds, and the whole cycle starts again. Okay. And the phase where the egg disintegrates mm. and is always disintegrating and is about to shed and all of that is the luthal phase. I okay. call it the queen of all wahala. <laughs> Your boobs are tender, <laughs> you are irritable, mm. you are not in the mood to have a conversation. The whole world is annoying you, and that is the lethal phase. So mm-hmm. those are the four phases of the menstrual cycle. And okay. in very basic terms, what is happening during each phase. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hmm. It, it, is it's that already giving me a, <laughs> no, it's a lot of information. <laughs> but just the fact that it's like the human the woman's body does not rest. It doesn't. doesn't. We like we don't catch a break. It doesn't. Oh, my God. From the day you are born to mm-hmm. the day you die, it's always working. Like, the fact that you are born with all your eggs, just that they are not matured. But you are born with everything already. It's just not matured. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. We need to... I don't... We need to call Eve, wherever she is. We need to... You but know, you know <laughs> I, I'm so glad you said that. I asked myself, if I were Eve, would I have done it differently? Would you would you would you have eaten the, the food? I might have. <laughs> Let's be very honest. I feel like I might you might have as well. Well you never well. know. So I don't blame Eve too much anymore because I tell myself, even today, mm-hmm. that I know the power of the saving grace and everything. Look at the things I do. <laughs> much more than when you yes, know that's so, so true i give eve some grace that's so true. i won't even that's lie so true. That's because so true. who knows maybe what we i would have, have done, done worse. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's what so i would have done so i really give eve <laughs> grace and it's so funny how i came to this conclusion i, mm-hmm. I used to have terrible cramps and mm-hmm. someday i was in so much pain i was like what is this Eve, what is this? Mm. And like something, I won't say something. I think my, I always tell people around me, my angel tapped me and my angel was like, keep quiet. What is this? What is this? I'm sure you would have done worse. Like, and it just made me see things in a whole different light and from a different perspective mm. that we give everybody grace. It's high time we give Eve some grace as well. But <laughs> we'll I know it's, grace. it's terrible. We'll give her grace. Um, so you, you did speak of your menstrual um, cramps which is, I think, how our conversation started yes. and you're telling me about the research we're doing and all of that. So um, is it better now? Way better. Way better. Over what the weekend, I mm. had a very important event. Mm. I had my period. I was walking about, helping out, doing what I can do. Okay. So it's, it's way better. But the thing about it is it's not every man, like... I will not say the way I was feeling last month is how I feel every month. There are okay. some months that I'm like, <laughs> ooh. But on a scale of 1 to 10, mm-hmm. it's like a 3. Okay. that's From a 100 to a 3, it's, I think that's it's a good job. Really good yeah. progress. Um, I know how it feels to have um, an important event. And uh, so I try to schedule things around that. It's like I cannot afford to have you come you know, know. Around, around this time, yeah. you know, <laughs> because first of all, I will not be in the mood for anything. I don't feel productive. I feel like I don't have any energy in me no. and there's the pain that comes with it. So I want you to help me understand uh, or help us understand, first of all, the mindset around that. 
do I constantly have to be on pain meds? Do I what what do I do to ensure that I get to the place that you are now? So for me, it's taking years okay. of knowing myself. Okay. So I feel like the very first thing you have to do is to know yourself. Okay. So when I'm talking about machi, the whole point is my women's health, which is a subsidiary of Wagos, is knowing yourself. Okay. Because because I know myself, there are certain things I would do or I wouldn't do. Mm. So the first thing I'll say is know yourself. Okay. Once you know yourself, you can tailor whatever generic information is out there to you. Mm. Nobody knows your body as much as you or maybe your partner because sometimes people's partners know them better than they do. I've heard so many women say, I was pregnant. I didn't even know I was pregnant, but my husband knew I was pregnant so before true. I did. Mm. So probably knowing yourself or your partner, you knowing your partner. Mm. Once you know yourself, you can find your... We are on our phones every time. So it doesn't hurt to spend a few minutes on Google or try and get information, just that there's an information overload out there. Yeah. So I'll just say if you're trying to get information, just make sure it's from the right source. So mm. it's from a certified governmental health website, or it's a published research paper. Mm. It will give you a few tips here and there. Okay. And it's a lot of trial and error. Unfortunately, when it comes to health and science surrounding the female body, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of information out there. Mm. Most of the things, you have to go through it, endure it, and figure it out for yourself. Because mm -hmm. when I was growing up, I remember there was this nurse in my primary school sick day. If you have cramps and you go, she'll suck you. She'll tell you, oh, it's something you're supposed to endure. Go mm -hmm. back and sit mm -hmm. in your class. Mm -hmm. So you, if you have cramps and you're going to the sick day, you have to lie. You have to say maybe my tummy is hurting or something because cramps for her cramps is not a reason why yeah. you should come so that yeah. brings me to the second point where it's it's valid for you to feel don't let anybody let you feel like you are being lazy mm. or you are being tired be true to yourself if you are genuinely in pain that's okay mm. you should be in pain because your uterus is shedding you your you know yeah, it's, sometimes it does feel like that. <laughs> it, it, it's not a comfortable feeling. Yeah. There's inflammation going on. Like, it's sore. The way you have a physical bruise. Mm -hmm. Like, there's literally something happening. So once you come to the understanding that, okay, it's supposed to happen. Th there isn't much I can do about yeah. what is happening. Apart from know myself and figure it out mm -hmm. and come up with ways and means to help me live a better life. Mm -hmm. You embrace it. I feel like that's what I did. I embraced it. I'm like, okay. I'm still a very, very young girl. There's no way I'm going through menopause anytime soon. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be having my period for a couple more years. So yeah. how do I make this not the worst time in my life? How do I deliberately try and figure out how to heal mm -hmm. or how to even reduce the pain a bit? Mm -hmm. So know yourself get resources to help you, mm. and also come to the understanding that it's not just you. There's an army of women feeling what you're also possibly feeling. Mm -hmm. And once you know you are not alone, it really helps with your mindset shift as well. Okay. That's that's great. Um, I like the fact that you touched on it's okay for you to feel like for you to feel that way like if you're tired if you're in pain and all of that i find that a lot of women also try to hide that fact that yeah. you know like there's some shame that there's comes shame. even I this conversation we are having no people will not typically have it yes. because there's some yes and i feel like i've become that person that talks about menstruation i was going to do nude lips i barely do red lips <laughs> I said I'm coming to talk about menstrual cycle, so I'll say <laughs> just so like I'm bold and I'm yes, and you know I'm talking about the menstrual cycle. But I'll usually go for anybody who has done my makeup today will be watching and be like, is this other? Yeah, like, I'll do something very subtle. subtle but I'm nude. Like, you know what? We don't have that conversation a lot because I feel growing up it was something that was shunned. Mm. You know, hey, mommy, know you're on your period. Don't talk about it. Don't let anybody know you're on your period. Yeah. And 
there used to be a lot of teasing when I was in primary school. So if accidentally you saw yourself and you use a cardigan to tie it up, the boys would tease you, all of those things. So we've just grown up with the um, shame mm -hmm. attached to the whole topic of the mm -hmm. menstrual cycle and menstruation. But mm -hmm. it's really nothing to be ashamed of. Yes, And it's even amazing how I'm so bold talking about the menstrual cycle because I used to be very shy mm. when I used to talk about it. I can't even believe this is me. So what changed? I don't know. <laughs> I, I genuinely don't know. I feel like I just got to the point where I was I was empowered. Like I felt I needed to talk about mm. it. Even mm. if one person is able to make better choices because I am talking about the menstrual cycle, mm -hmm. I am going to be doing that. So I started talking about it more. And I've realized people want to have the conversation. They just don't have anybody to have the conversation with. So then, oh, I Ava talks about the menstrual cycle. I might as well have a conversation yes. with her. Yes. So I think that is how come I talk about. But it's really nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. It's really nothing to be shy of. Mm. And I tell people, at this your big age, especially men, at this your big age, why are you shy that a woman sitting next to you is of her kind? Mm. Come on. <laughs> This is your big age. You're a big boy. Don't, Don't do, do that. Do that. <laughs> Stop it. Don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I also find um some men say you should be used to it. You should be used to the pain by now. Like you've you've how many years have you been menstruating? You menstruate every month. Like, why are you not used to it? Yeah. And I tell them the same thing that you play football every Sunday, you fall down, you sprain your ankle, you get hit. You are never used to the pain. It's always painful. You do there are certain things that and you know the thing about the menstrual cycle is every month it comes with something. Sometimes it's cramps. Sometimes it's like your lower back. Another time is your waist. Mm -hmm. You don't even know what is coming this month. So how can you be used to something that you <laughs> don't, don't know? know. <laughs> you will not get used yeah. to the discomfort that comes with it. I don't think you can prepare so much for it so that's really not a valid i've heard so many people especially men say that as well oh you should be it's really and there even women the women who don't have cramps they also say some <laughs> oh, I don't, i've had a, i've had an argument with someone about this before oh she's exaggerating i won't lie sometimes you exact you know i've had a few months that ah come on I already don't want to do this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I already don't want to do this. And my period has been so gracious to show up. So I just take advantage of it. Mm. But it's a bad habit. You shouldn't always take advantage of your period to be lazy. Mm. If you do that, you are not being true to yourself. Unless you have dysmenorrhea or very serious conditions yeah. that do not allow you to get up from bed and everything. Mm. I feel like you should be able to manage it in a way that it doesn't interrupt your life. Mm -hmm. Because in as much as we're having this conversation and we're saying it's normal and everything, your boss at work is not going to reschedule an important board yes. meeting because you're on your period. Yes, The world is not going to stop because you're on your period. Exactly. So it's just a matter of understanding that, yes, I'm going through it. It's painful. People are going through it. It's painful. But the world does not stop for us because we're on, a, uh, we're on our period. Mm. So how do we um, come up with ways and means to make this less painful, more bearable? Mm. There are certain months that you cannot. Yeah. And it's fine to take a yeah. break. Yeah. But it shouldn't be your... Un like, everybody in your office shouldn't know that oh, today, Abba is on her period, <laughs> you know? Yes. And there are some women like that. Mm. If it's so unbearable that every month uh, the whole world knows you're on your period, you should see a healthcare professional mm. because it shouldn't be so painful, so unbearable that you can't move, you can't do anything. The world has to come to a standstill. It shouldn't be like that. Mm. So that's why I started with it's important to know yourself. And okay. You have to be true to yourself. Okay. You know when the pain is a two and you know when the pain is a ten. Mm -hmm. When the pain is a two, don't say the pain is a ten. When the pain is a ten, be true to yourself and say the pain is a ten. I need I need time off. Mm -hmm. 
don't be superwoman when the pain is a 10. Mm. And don't be lazy when the pain is a 2. Mm. You have to know yourself and be true to yourself mm. in regards to this. Okay. Yeah. Um, before we go into the kind of lifestyles we should, you know, um, actively pursue to be able to have, you know, it a little bit easier. I want us to talk about some of the symptoms of in the different the phases. different phase. Yeah. Okay. So... Let's start with menstruation. Mm -hmm. So menstruation is, everybody knows menstruation. Mm -hmm. You're not in the blues. You lose appetite for quite a number of women. Some women actually have a good appetite during menstruation, but mm -hmm. that's not the norm. When it comes to emotions, you are easily ticked. Mm -hmm. You're not having a good time. Mm -hmm. You could be fine the past few weeks and you s something triggers you mm -hmm. and you're so angry. Mm -hmm. It's not because of what just happened. Mm -hmm. you, you, you go through your mind to bring scenarios sometimes <laughs> to even cry. So when all of that is happening, it's usually the latter part of the lethal phase okay. into menstruation. Okay. Is that the same time that um, you can get a bit depressive? Yes. Okay. But you shouldn't get too depressive that you want to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. There are women that when they have their period, they get so depressed that they want to commit suicide, mm. that you should seek help. Okay. But it's okay to want to isolate. It's mm. okay to want to stay in your corner. It's okay. So for people like me who talk a lot and are bubbly and the life of the party, when I'm in my period, sometimes I just I just want me time. I just, and I live alone, and I've never been so grateful for living alone <laughs> as much as when I'm in my period. Yeah. Because I do everything on my own accord. I do everything on my own. But I know that a time is coming where I will be living with my, like, my husband and my Your family. Kids, and yeah. I cannot just say I'm on my period, so hey. I don't want to have it <laughs> go outside. <laughs> You go and put your. I'm not in the mood today. No, 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 no. You can't do that. So it's just a matter of back to like adapting. I'm privileged enough to live on my own in this stage of my life mm -hmm. when I'm on my period. Mm -hmm. But what happens when I'm living with people and yes. I'm on my period? You yes. still have to find ways and means to manage that. Mm -hmm. Then you come to the folukta phase. So the folukta phase, I would say, is that person at the party mm -hmm. who she's come, she sit down. <laughs> She's not doing too much, but with a little nudge, she's up on her feet. Mm. So that's how you sort of feel in the follicular phase. You don't feel too on top of the world, but you're okay. Mm. On a regular, you won't snap at somebody. You wouldn't want to... If somebody has a conversation with you, you would respond. Mm -hmm. You're okay. Life okay. is not too bad. Like okay. You're okay. okay. I feel like the follicular phase is the happy state for a lot of women because mm. like you are just okay you mm. are just okay then i will come to a relation mm. a relation will be that girl at the party who hey come <laughs> on shut 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 bring shut, it shut. on exactly <laughs> you are freakier you are happier you are in a better mood mm. a lot of women who are creatives if you look at yourself you realize that your creative surge happens around a relation yes because what happens is the hormones that are being produced by your brain um, are at its peak there, LH and FSH. Also, your sex hormones, which is estrogen mm -hmm. and progesterone. <laughs> I want to take my time before <laughs> that yeah, Shanti and me will full. show up right now. I'm it's a mouthful. Down. <laughs> exactly. You realize that estrogen is also sort of rising around that side. And even though progesterone is not at its highest at that part, it's also sort of rising. So you generally have a very good feel of, mm. you are in a good mood. You yeah. are in a happier <laughs> mood. You are more easily to forgive your ex. Like, you are in <laughs> You know, you are in a very Take good... Take us there, Abba. You are, <laughs> you are in a very good mood. Mm -hmm. Then the beginning of the lethal phase would be that person that when she came to the party, she was having a good time. But... Her battery has run out. Now she wants to <laughs> Then the latter bit of the lethal phase would be that person that just got to the party, heard the music and sat back in her car and she went mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. So the lethal phase is quite long. It's the longest phase. Okay. And we, I would, I always divide a lethal phase into two because how you feel at the beginning of the lethal phase, right after a relation, 
is very different from how you feel at the end of the lethal phase okay. when you miss your you're about, is to, about start to start menstruating. That's why I say it's a cycle. Mm. It's not linear. It's the faces feed into each other. Okay. So using these girls at the party, mm -hmm. I've, I hope I've been able to give you an idea of how yeah. you might feel during mm. the different phases mm. of the cycle. I think um, th when you explained to me the first time, then I started paying attention to my body, my mind around those times. Mm -hmm. So now I know when to schedule one-on-ones. Because there are times that Party, I don't... Party, run me my check. <laughs> <laughs> run me my check. Where's my checkbook? Please bring my checkbook. <laughs> so I know when to schedule one-on-ones. I know when to, like, if I'm holding a class, when it should be and all of that. Because there are times that I know that I cannot have human interactions. Mm. Even if I can have human interactions, my brain just does not want to yeah. do anything, mm. right? And... Um, it's it's really helped me. So this is me saying that as a woman, even as a man, you need to pay attention to yourself. Pay attention to the patterns, the things that are, you're like, ah, this thing, it keeps happening it keeps around happening this time. Around what, this is time. Happening? what is happening? And I think the those apps too, I don't want to mention a specific one. Uh, but, but if you have a smartphone, every mm. smartphone has an inbuilt um period tracker okay you just have to look at the health app on your smartphone that's that's true So whether you use an iphone or you use an android mm. or whatever mm. you can just start from there and there are numerous apps that you can also use that that's true mm. um i know that sometimes I'm, I'm feeling a type of way maybe i wake up and i'm so sad and then I'll see a notification on my phone. It's like, you are... Your period starts in the next five <laughs> days. So you're like, ah. And there's, there's even this particular one, like, you are X, Y, and Z. That is why you're feeling the way you're feeling. I'm like, okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you for the I heads know, up. And I so I handle things a lot more easier, like differently, because I know that, okay, this is the phase I'm in. Mm -hmm. So my hormones are going to be coming for me, you know, during this, um, this phase. So... Like he said, it's very important for you to know yourself. yourself. Like, don't just live for living sake. Pay attention to things. Pay attention to your body. Pay attention to the things that you res you, you respond to. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. I cut um, coffee out of my diet because I realized that it makes... When I take coffee and my period comes, the crumbs are on a different level. Yeah. And uh, apart from that, it also makes me jittery, you know, like it's like the, there's so much excitement. It's, I don't know if that's what they call sugar rush or whatever. I call it, but <laughs> caffeine has a very interesting effect on the brain. The way caffeine plays on the brain for different people mm -hmm. is so interesting. I was reading a research study somewhere last year about mm -hmm. how different people act to caffeine. I'm mm. like, God, it's a crazy. That's interesting. It's the same chemical formula, mm -hmm. but one person is one person is one. How? how? So it comes back to knowing yourself, because I have this client. She never has crumbs till she takes the post pill. Okay. And that month she can't do nothing. I have another client. She has terrible, terrible, terrible crumbs. Mm till like the month that she decides to cut out um gluten foods she's not gluten intolerant but when she moved out of the country and she started just because that was what was available mm -hmm. she started eating more gluten-free options she realized that ah i'm not getting I'm not. so but if you ask me to look for a, like a correlation between post pill and crumbs i might not find it if you ask me to look for a correlation research article between gluten and crumbs, mm. I may not find it. So we are so unique. We are, we are, we are different. There mm. is nobody like you. And I'm not saying it from a woman empowerment point of view. I'm saying it from <laughs> there's actually nobody like it's you. It's factual. So the things that would work for you, it, you have to know yourself to be able to implement the things that would work for you. Mm. 
like this caffeine thing that you're saying, I know there will be somebody out there who will be watching this. Well, that doesn't work for me. Caffeine helps my cramps. And that's okay. Yes, that's so okay. That's so okay. it's not a one-size-fits-all approach yeah. when it comes yeah. to this at yeah. all. Yeah. On the differences, I also, um, I think from secondary school, I, have a, I had a friend who takes sugar, like when she's cramping, and sugar eases her. I've had I've heard this several times, but the research out there is sugar worsens cramps. Sugar worsens my cramps. So at that time, I was like, no, don't take sugar. She's like, no, no. sugar helps me. So then it comes back to the, <laughs> how does sugar help somebody and sugar doesn't help somebody? We never have the answers. So it's just about knowing yourself and figuring out yeah, hmm. what works. What works God for is you. amazing. I know. It's so amazing. I know. Um, I also feel like if you lean more into your relationship with God, which is like an X-ray into who you are, it helps you understand yourself better. I won't even lie. Mm. I won't even lie because I, when I say people laugh, but I'm like, you know what? I cannot die and I'm at the gate mm -hmm. and they are asking me, the great cloud of witnesses are asking you, so you, <laughs> this world that you came, you mm -hmm. just came to live. You didn't, like, your purpose is not just your divine purpose. I feel like even understanding the way your body works yes. is part of knowing your purpose. Mm. Knowing yourself, I feel, is the beginning of knowing who Knowing who you are in Christ is the ultimate. But yes. you have to know who you are because you're an earthly being. Yes. Yes. What anoints you, you have to know. Because when you know what anoints you, you put measures in place so you don't get angry. So true. When you know your bad traits, mm -hmm. if you know you're a liar, <laughs> you don't put yourself in certain situations where you have to be coming up with stories. If you know you were a thief, you don't put yourself in situations where you will not go and apply for a job and ask to be the cashier. Mm. If you know that you are not a loyal person, you don't you don't make empty, you don't make promises because people will hold you to yes. it. Yes. And I'm not saying I'm deliberately saying all these traits because everybody, I'm sure everybody watching this podcast, if you dig deep down into your heart, there's something you should you know is to know a good trait. Yeah. yeah. And it's good to know yourself because when you know yourself, you know how to act accordingly. Mm. And it doesn't cause you to sin. Yes. Because you know yeah. you know you are like this. Yeah. So if yeah. something like this, you you walk to the side. Look the other way. You look the other <laughs> way. You look the other way. Ah, thank you for that. I didn't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize the conversation was going that way. We're but good. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. um, I mean, we said that the Holy Spirit should lead the conversation. Amen. So wherever yeah. he's taking it, uh, back to the cycles. I want us to throw a lot more light on ovulation, especially. Um, especially for my single ladies. You know, it's very um, easy for you to feel a certain way during that time. And it's, it's not the devil. It's not the enemy. <laughs> that is attacking you with isn't. the edges that you're having and all like it's okay, it's okay that you're saying that i'm celibate i want to pursue purity for god however these emotions or these feelings are you know i know <laughs> i know and i've been the past couple of i've been telling whoever will listen or when i meet up with my girls because i have different female friendships mm -hmm. i'm like guys i'm celibate uh-huh all yeah. for Christ. Yes. You know, <laughs> I'm waiting on the Lord. Mm. But when you're relating, your body is preparing you to get pregnant. Yes. And the same feeling that during your singlehood and during your purity chase and everything feels like a curse will be that same feeling, will be that same body function that would be a blessing when you're trying to conceive. Mm. Because... I've not been married before, so I can't speak to it. But I don't think you would want your husband to touch you every single day. Because I've ha I've had numerous conversations from different clients, older people that I know who are married, that sometimes he just wants to sleep, right? But when you're ovulating, your body is literally preparing an egg. Mm. Your body is preparing itself for pregnancy. Yes. So it comes with everything 
that would prepare you mm -hmm. for pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So the edges, the uh, what you're feeling, oh my goodness, somebody in your office that every time I'm like, <laughs> today you're looking at his shoe and you're like, your shoe is nice. But let's be for real. Could be cute. <laughs> it's not, it's not giving. It's not giving. Mm. Or you see a wedding trending in Accra that weekend that you're relating and looking at you're like, like yeah. in your mind your body is literally physically mm. mentally mm. emotionally mm. preparing you yeah. for pregnancy so you have all these interesting emotions and everything but it comes back to the same thing uh, there's this a proverb i don't know how to say it in three but it literally translates to i think the water that drowns something or the fire that sets something are lit is the same mm, fire. Mm, it mm, has mm, something. Yeah. So it's there for a purpose, right? And it Like there are two sides to the coin. Exactly. So. It would serve its purpose when time is due, but it's really not the devil. But one thing I've learned, this is not coming from the point of being a nutritionist or a, a woman's health. It's just from a very vulnerable girl who's like, Father Lord, I need you mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. Help me live a good life. I've just come to the understanding that sometimes what you feed your mind with before you ovulate can play a very like crucial role with how you okay. respond to ovulation. Okay. So if throughout the month before you ovulate, you are feeding your mind with things that would only like increase the urges, obviously. Mm. But if you've tried your best to keep your mind Think about things that are honorable, things things that are right, things that, that are pure. pure. <laughs> when the time comes, yes, That's you That's Philippians feel, 4. Hey, come Three. on. Yeah. Come <laughs> on. Like, you feel what... Well, but your, your mind is saying, you know, oh, okay, hey, his shoe was cute, so... Yeah. You are moving on with your life. Yeah. It's not because of his... His cute shoe that you are <laughs> come to follow him to his house. <laughs> you get it? Yes. So, coming from the... Christian girl who is genuinely trying her best. In no way am I, not at all. I'm not the poster girl for modern day Christianity. Not yes, at all, full yeah. of flaws and everything. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that's something that is helping. Mm. What you feed your mind mm. helps you a lot. And it's not just about like the hormones and everything. In other phases as well because okay. if you are menstruating and you are sad and you are depressed and you've also been feeding your mind with scenarios or you've not let the peace of god take control you'll be so sad a situation that happened at work that you could have easily moved on you, you keep realize dwelling that on you that. keep dwelling on that you are so sad and the hormones are also there so then it just makes it bigger than it actually mm. is so it's not just about ovulation, but it's about how, as we mentioned a few minutes ago, at every phase of your cycle, you are feeling a type of way. Mm. So how your mind, what is in your mind will also really show during so the cycle. So basically, the hormones just amplify whatever what is there. And I had this, I actually learned this last month. Mm. I had... Um, an Instagram live with a, a psychologist, mm -hmm. um, Machi, and we're mm -hmm. talking about all the girls I know are mad, like basically how we behave during the, our periods. And she was like, your hormones are, are there. You can't do anything about it, but they are just amplifying. So if you've not done the basic groundwork, if mm. you've not done the healing, if you've not done the understanding, mm -hmm. if you've not done all of that, you can't blame if you are following Kwesi to his house every time you're relating, <laughs> you really cannot we blame. We need to check you, sis. Exactly. Because that means there's something you have to resolve with Kwesi. Don't blame the hormones. You can't blame the hormones. <laughs> it's just amplifying okay. whatever mm. it is that is there or whatever it is that you need to sort out or work on. Mm. I love. I really love this. It's, this is enlightening for me as well. So I just keep making sure that I feed my mind the things yeah. I need to feed, the right things, the, right the things, things that are pure, the things that are, Which you is, know. Which is the most difficult thing because I don't know if I'm the only person. My mind can wander. <laughs> Sometimes I come to myself, I'm like, hey. How did you get here? Am I still in a crowd? <laughs> because in my mind, 
I'm on a yacht, like in like Sicily, or I'm having an amazing summer. In like, and I'm like, hey, I'm here. I'm still here. Okay, so it's it's so difficult to keep your mind on the things that appear amazing, worthy yeah. of thought, and all yeah. of those things. Yeah. But yeah. it's not just what you think about. You sometimes it's what happens in your environment mm-hmm. as well, um, because the hormones are amplified that just amplifying things you're thinking about and things happening around mm-hmm. you. So you have to be selfish with your space. You have mm. to be selfish with your peace. Mm. You have to protect your peace. Any Anybody coming into your peace, if you don't allow it, you have to protect. You have to be, as women, I feel like we're not selfish enough. Mm. But I agree. I feel like we're not I selfish agree. enough. So when it comes to you, your, your body, your peace, your what goes into your mind. Yes, you have to be selfish. Mm. You have to guard it. Yes, you have to. You have to. You have to be in charge because there's something I tell myself all the time that I'm the commander of my destiny. Mm. At the end of the day, I was telling my mother yesterday I, when I was telling her I had a terrible day. I was mm. like, "This is the worst choice I have made in my adult life." And I cannot even be angry at anybody <laughs> because I had so many options and I decided to choose this person. So if this person has disappointed me so much, I cannot blame that person. And I have done so much ground and emotional work to come to that point mm-hmm. because I would have easily, like, I'm angry. Everybody's annoying me. Mm. Don't talk to me. Mm-hmm. But they didn't make that decision yes. for me. Yes. <laughs> and blaming everybody, everybody else. I cannot even be angry at the person that did that to me because the person didn't come and pull me and say, Abba, come. I walked <laughs> to the person and I said, so, 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 mm. so, so. So if the person has disappointed me, I was asking my mother yesterday, you know, so what am I supposed to learn from what just happened? Because what is this? Mm. So you have to be selfish because at the end of the day, you cannot blame anybody but yourself when yeah. it comes to so many things concerning your life, yeah. concerning your body, concerning your menstrual cycle. It's you. You have to, you have to be in control. Mm. You have to know. You have to decide what to do, what not to do. Mm. So you said something that you had done a lot of groundwork on your emotions. How did you get there? I, don't even like, I know this <laughs> will sound so cliché. But the Bible. I love it. <laughs> I won't even like, I feel like the biggest shock that a lot of people are realizing about me recently is I'm a God girl. I th- I've known this all. Like w- you have what? because we we have conversations <laughs> okay, yeah, true, on that. True. I feel like that's the biggest shock a lot of people. Over the weekend, we were all sitting down at the event and they were playing songs and they were playing songs and I was singing most of these very deep tree songs and everything. <laughs> And a friend of mine made a comment, so to you're a church girl, I'm like, I'm a certified church girl. And it's it's two different things. Like, you see, I'm, I'm a church girl, like everybody knows. Mm-hmm. But the groundwork I've done on myself is, I've realized that I'm so flawed. Like, I'm deeply flawed. And I try to understand what God wants me to do. Mm-hmm. Because I know I'm a force. Mm. In the next 10 years, people will be looking for this YouTube to watch mm. because where I'll be in the next 10 let's years, everybody it. will want to come let's back and have see. It. <laughs> if you are coming here from 10 years. 10 years. Uh, hi. 20, 34. 20, 34. Hi. Hello. But yeah, <laughs> but I know that before I get to that, put, like the whatever I do, yeah. I cannot be that with who I am right now. Mm. The who I am right now or the who I was a few years ago, was bad with money. Me. How is that looking now? I'm looking way better. <laughs> me. That conversation. Oh, come on. We know how to make the money and we know how to spend me. it. <laughs> I'm the person telling them, like, life is for the living. <laughs> oh. Every, oh, it's so tea. Uh, I'm in this car. Oh, so I'm buying. Oh, how much is it? Thousand CDs. What is it? Take but meanwhile, the thousand CDs, you know, it's not like what is thousand CDs. I suffered to get the thousand CDs. But I will, so I knew that the me then, if I'm not careful and diligent, 
I cannot handle a bigger thing. Mm, so yeah. now I started being mindful with money. Mm. Emotions. I, I'm like, you know what? I need to be a good wife. Mm. It's not just about, oh my God, he's good, he's a good man. I need to be a good partner. Mm. So how do I be a good... I need to be a good friend. It's not always about people doing... I need to be a good friend. Mm -hmm. I own a business. I need to be a good leader. You can read all the books, but there's the blueprint. Yes. So I've tried my best. I'm still doing a lot of work. Mm. I don't think that work ever ends. I don't think in, so in as honesty. well. In honesty, I don't think it ends. I don't think so as well. But that is really what has helped me. But I think therapy also helps. Mm. Because there are some traumas we don't talk about. You can't find anybody to talk about yes. it with. And we come from a society where, even if you tell your African mother that you're coming from therapy, then the hawa will call therapy. <laughs> But it comes to a point where you need somebody to help you. God, sometimes you read the Bible, you will not understand. You watch a sermon, you will not understand. But you're having a conversation with somebody and the person will break down that chapter you've been dwelling on for months and it becomes clear. Yes. And you're like, wow, this is what it means. This is what I was supposed to do. So doing the ground, doing the work, mm. is different from is different for everybody. Mm. But for me, knowing God and the Bible mm. has really helped me. There are still so many passages in the Bible that I'm so confused about. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. close. I'm like, I'll come back to you yes. later. But the ones that I understand, I understand, and I try to, I try to apply it. I was talking to somebody before I was coming. We're talking about very mindful, very demeaning. Yeah. And she was like, Sati, you are very mindful, very demeaning. And I'm like, me, I live by the philosophy, make it your business to live a quiet life. So sometimes when I'm doing something, I check myself. Because why should somebody see? Yes. Why should somebody know? Mm. I, so Terry, are you like are you making it your business to live a quiet life? Mm. No, but sometimes do I do things and I want everybody to see because the Bible has said I'm a city set on a hill, and I cannot be hidden. So everybody must see, mm. but it comes with a catch so that people will see your good works and glorify your yes. Father in heaven. Yes. So if what I'm doing is not going to glorify, glorify my, father my Father in then heaven, then why set it on the city? Why set on it on the on, on the, the hill, hill for Sorry. people to see? Yeah. So. You just have to know how to apply. It's not just reading. It's applying and using that as your your tools mm. to work on your inner self. Thank you for that. You're Thank you. I know I made a good choice. <laughs> my colleague. <laughs> My co- I wasn't even my choice, so <laughs> Holy Spirit, I'm sorry for taking your credit. <laughs> um, so now let's go into lifestyles we can like a lifestyle we can live around these cycles that we've mentioned Mm -hmm. and you know how to just be well how to be well i like that since i'm a nutritionist i'll start with diet okay right so there are certain things i want you to keep in mind Mm. when you're on your period you are losing blood Mm -hmm. if you've not learned anything from your integrated science you know that blood has a relationship with iron so if you're losing blood, you need to eat foods rich in iron. Mm. But it goes beyond just eating foods rich in iron. If you're eating a lot of iron, mm-hmm. you need help for the iron to absorb properly, especially if it's coming from plant-based sources, okay. like contemporary spinach and all of that. So vitamin C goes very well with iron. Okay. So when you're on your period, more vitamin C, more iron. Okay. Your body, if you're supposed to take your body temperature, Every single day for a whole cycle, you realize that during ovulation, you have the highest. During okay. menstruation, you have the lowest. Okay. So I love learning things from other cultures. So I love understanding Asian medicine. So even though it's not Western medicine, in Asia medis- Asian medicine, when you're in your period, they eat more warming foods. Okay. So soups. I do it. 
and I think it's helped because mm. it's holistic. It doesn't stand alone. Okay. So you eat more warming foods, so your soups, all of those things. Mm. You go hard on the iron, so okay. your meats. If you're vegetarian, you go for your um, plant-based iron source, supplement it with the vitamin C, okay. all of those things. Then when we come to follicular phase, your body is preparing to release an egg. Okay. So you want to try your best and help feed your body with good bacteria. Okay. So you should be aiming for probiotics and prebiotics. I've seen a lot of people um, use or not understand probiotics and prebiotics. Me so cry, I don't understand. <laughs> so let's just take probiotics as the good bacteria. So okay. foods that contain the good bacteria. So like your fermented milk drinks, your yogurt, all of those things. Okay. And your prebiotics will be things that feed the good bacteria. Okay. So... Yes, you've introduced them into your stomach, but you need to feed them to grow. So then you have your prebiotics, your bananas, mm. all of those things coming in. Okay. So if you know me, you know I like to always leave you with some homework. I will never yes. feed you with everything <laughs> yeah. because then you say, Abba said. I never want it to be Abba said. I want it to be, Abba gave me this and I went to find this on my own. So this is tailored for me. So then you have your prebiotics, like your gut health boosting foods around mm -hmm. that time. Then when you get to ovulation, too much of everything is bad. And remember I said that during ovulation, everything is peak, peak, yes. peak, peak. So you want to go with things that will help your liver detox. Okay. So you want to go with more cruciferous vegetables. What's that? So like um, Brussels sprouts, cabbages, all okay. of those things. Take it as there's an excess of so many hormones in your body. So these things are going to mop them up. Okay. Just take it. It doesn't happen like that, but mm. just the mental picture. Okay. Then when it comes to the luteal phase, mm. we have the beginning and the end. Mm. So the beginning part of the luteal phase, you can still continue with most of the things you were eating during ovulation because this it's a dip. It's now dipping in everything. Mm -hmm. But the luteal phase is where you have to go hard with your anti-inflammatory foods. Okay all of those things because you are sore, literally, you are bruised. So things that if you are physically sick, mm -hmm. you will eat more of. Okay. You eat more of that during the luteal phase. Okay. So it will come back and feed into the menstrual phase. Mm. Also, you can eat more of your fresh um, things during ovulation, less cooking, more fresh, more, because your body temperature is presumed to be at its highest. So okay. you want to help cool it down. Okay. So okay. more of your fresh stuff as opposed to more of the cool stuff. You people need to pay a bath for this. Honestly. Um, but before before we, <laughs> we get into that, like I would really love if people actually book a call with you and like have tailored because i know you do tailored yeah. you know there's a proper way there's, it's a, done. there's a proper so way. don't pick just this information and run with it but go and book a call with abba and let us sort you out <laughs> okay please let's go on yes so that would that would be a bit about the diet just okay. to say. but life is not just about diet as i said earlier mm -hmm. we have exercise mm. so when you are menstruating, some people will say don't exercise. Some people will say exercise. Some months I exercise, some months I don't. Mm. It's really all about how you're feeling. But if you're up to exercising, you can do very minimal things that are not stressing your body. Things that are not causing your cortisol level to rise even higher. Like mm. very cool stuff. So yoga, pilates, bar. All of those things. Okay. Then ovulation, you go hard mm. because you are. If you have the energy to be chasing Kwesi Mensa to his house because of his shoe, you should be able to lift some weights. Kwesi Mensa. <laughs> if you're Kwesi Mensa, please look for me on Instagram and slide into my DMs. This is just banter. But yeah, so that is like you have that so mm. use it to the best of your ability mm. then the in between stages you build up so f um, menstruation you are mm -hmm. low so the low stuff yes ovulation is here mm -hmm. so you build up you increase your weight everything you build it up okay to ovulation then you reduce it back to menstruation so it'll be like this okay like this. okay so even your workout even your workout ideally should be structured around your menstrual cycle. Mm. 
ideally. But I'm using the word ideally because it's so difficult. It's so difficult, especially if you have a male trainer in the gym. Yes. <laughs> My trainer is called Alanda. Alanda doesn't understand anything. Every time I'm arguing with him, he's like, you could pick up this weight last week, Jamaican. You could pick up this weight last week. This week you come, you're being lazy. I'm like, hey, Alanda, let me breathe. Come on. I can't. Don't stress me. Yeah. So he's like, we go all the way to 100 kg, and now we come back to 20. I'm like, Alanda, do you want to see me here or you don't want to see me here? Mm. So it's, even when you know that, you, you, you know that, okay, I'm trying my best. I showed up. So even your workouts can be tailored. Then your productivity. Mm. Don't beat yourself too much when you are on your period. Because mm. let's be honest, me, most of my babies, weight goals was birth when I was ovulating. Um, machi, most of them are birth around that period. Because when I'm on my period, mentally... I'm out of it. Mm. I just mm. want to relax and be taken care of. Yeah. I'm just a baby. <laughs> I cannot be bothered. Like, if you book a consult with me during my period, it's very likely that you would deal with somebody else on the team and not me. Let us know the date so that we know which I one. Put it, so it's me. I put it out there when it's me. But, yeah, that's how it is. So even your productivity is very dependent. So the productivity yeah. is also sort of like the workouts. So come, come, and you work mm. it out like that. Mm. So sometimes people are able to do a month's work when they are around ovulation. So if you are one of those people, you take advantage of it. So it balances it out. Mm. Because I tell people that life is not every day. Life is from the beginning to the end. Mm. So things you can't do today, you don't say today has ended, so that's it. You make up for it the next day. The days you have a bit more time, you try and do things in a way that when the rainy day comes, you have something stored. Mm. So mm. productivity is sort of like the workout. Then you try your best. In the beginning, it's very difficult. So you take, I tell people, take one phase at a time. If it's menstruation you're mm -hmm. starting with, forget about the other parts of the cycle. But when it comes to menstruation, be very mindful of it all the things you can possibly do, do it. After a couple of months, you get a hang of menstruation. Then you introduce the next one, follicular. Mm. Then you introduce ovulation. It will take you about 12 to 24 months to really curate something for yourself. Mm -hmm. But once you get a hang of it, you become a better person for it. Mm. As for this episode, I'm going to... <laughs> listen and listen and yes. listen um because like these are as much as you had given me you know insights yeah. and all of that like, every time i hear you speak about it there's always like Something. it's like you have a wealth of knowledge in it so we are always uncovering things yeah. every time we <laughs> every time we speak um so i want to you spoke about cortisol so i want i want you to just explain just the way you explained to me the other time. I don't, I genuinely don't even remember. You don't remember me, I remember, <laughs> because it helped me. I genuinely, um, but I'll, I'll just, so basically that's the stress or one of the hormones that makes you stress. Okay. One thing about cortisol is for women, depending on, I didn't even want to bring PCOS and all of those things in, mm. but it's one of the hormones that, can easily be triggered or over-secreted depending on your sex hormones or the hormones being secreted by your brain, mm. right? Okay. So one thing you have to be mindful of throughout your cycle is controlling your stress. Okay. When it comes to certain parts of the cycle, your stress hormones are more likely to go up okay. just because of the hormonal interactions and all these different hormones that we've mentioned so mm. far. Mm. One thing I tell people is when you are up there, mm -hmm. ovulation, you are barely stressed. Let's be for real. It's like, even if you are stressed, you don't feel you are stressed because the good, the feel good hormones mm -hmm. are outweighing yes. the stress hormones. Yeah. So let's leave the up there, but let's come more to the luteal phase. Mm -hmm when you're more likely to be 
depressed, when you're more likely to not feel too good, mm. all of those things that are happening, you are, you're not feeling good. You are not sleeping well. Yeah. You are not eating well. You are constipated. Mm. All of those things. You are just not feeling good. Yeah. And if you don't, if you are not, I feel like I've used mindful a lot. <laughs> But I just use mindful <laughs> on the regular. It's not because of the trend going yeah, on. Yeah. But you, if you are not too mindful, your hormonal levels are causing your stress levels to rise. So what I tell people is, me, I know it sounds so cliche. I don't know if I told you this or I've told I've told somebody who has okay. ever listened <laughs> that sleep, rest, is one of the best ways to counter the action of this hormone. And when I say rest, rest. So me, I'm a gym girl. So if I'm doing Pilates, my body will not perceive it as rest. Okay. Because for my body, that's what we do. Mm. But somebody who, like I'm a weight girl. Sorry, I said I'm a gym girl. I'm a yeah. weight girl. I okay. lift weights. Mm. So if I'm doing like heavy stuff and I come back and I just do something like Pilates it's still along the lines of active exercise mm -hmm. but if I go out of the gym and I do something like swimming mm -hmm. or tennis mm. or something or a long walk my body's like oh you're resting now mm. if you are you own a business on social media and you are resting on TikTok I mean for real are you serious mm. Your body is not, even though you are technically not working, mm -hmm. it's the same environment. Yes. So you need to walk away from what you usually do, even though it would quantify. My mother, TikTok is rest for her because her work has nothing to do with her phone. When she comes home in the evening and she's like, hey, mommy, where should we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. rest for her. But for me, I wouldn't really consider that as That's that. rest. So when it comes to stress, the whole point of me emphasizing stress is to bring in rest. Okay. That's why I talk about stress a lot throughout the cycle. Mm. So if you are stressed, you need to rest. If you are resting, you need to know what is considered rest for you. And you find a way to easily slip that into your routine. Mm. And I always tell people, something that you have to go out of your way to do it, you might as well not start. Because that is not sustainable. Mm. You mm. can't continue it. Okay. So your rest should be something low maintenance, something you can easily do. Okay. If your rest is going for a massage every week and you are not part of the movers and shakers of the economy, can you pay, I don't know how much <laughs> it costs now, but if let's say you are earning 3,000 CDs and the massage is 500 CDs, are you going to spend 2,000 CDs? <laughs> On your rest, yeah. just because Abba said rest. Mm. No. Mm. So you have to find ways and means that fit your lifestyle, fit your schedule, fit who you are. Okay. Which is still a bit different from what you are used to. Mm. And use that to rest. Mm. Okay. Rest, oh. Rest. You hear it? <laughs> rest. So we work around the clock. Constantly and working, constantly doing it's things. It's crazy. Two jobs, three jobs. It's but God will take care of us. God, God will take care of us. God will take care of us. <laughs> All right. So into our strictly business segment, um, you run weight goals with Abba, mm. and there's Machi. That is non 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 profit, non -profit yeah. NGO. And so I want to know a little bit about that, um, both of them. And then what has been the most challenging thing for you growing both brands? Okay, so um, I'll start with where it goes. Where it goes turned six recently. Mm -hmm. And where it goes started off very, I didn't think it would be what it is. So, oh, what course did you do? I did nutrition and food science. Hey, then you can help me. So I started helping people whilst I was in school. Like, okay. Oh, and I realized it was working. It was working. It was working. I was like, ah, even if I sell this and I get some extra money, it's not bad. Mm. So I just decided after I tested with a lot of people, figured out to do the thing, I decided to sell my first diet plan, mm. and that's how it picked up. 
and from then it's what it is mm. now. Mm. Um, the thing with Wavels is in the beginning when I started, I was lost. I didn't know what I was doing. Okay. So it got to a time I didn't know whether I was a content creator. <laughs> it got to a time I didn't know whether I was doing culinary stuff. It got to a time I didn't know whether I was doing strictly nutrition. It was a journey to discovery. Mm. I feel like I'm still not there yet, but at least it's it's not clear, but it's blurry. It's not close. Mm. Mm. So where it goes, that's how it started. It started a young girl who studied nutrition in school, could help people, took an advantage of it, okay. transformed it into a business, mm. and that is how it's grown. Okay. Machi actually came from the conversation we just had. Mm. A lot of my clients, I realized that they were having issues with their weight just because they didn't know their menstrual cycle. Okay. So I was like, this is a big problem. A lot of women do not know themselves. Mm. So I said, okay, when it comes to the issue of period menstruation, it's a big issue. From period poverty to lack of period knowledge. Like, period, it's, it's lacking. Yeah. You think about knowing yourself when you can even buy a pad. Mm. There's a, like a level of self-actualization you have to get to mm -hmm. before you get to period knowledge and all of those things. Mm, mm. So how do we tackle the issue from both ways? Mm -hmm. How do we help women who are not facing period poverty mm. but are facing um, lack of period knowledge? Mm. And how do we help women or young girls who are facing period poverty? Mm -hmm. So back to the whole menstrual cycle, helping people and all of those things. Okay. But it goes beyond just menstrual health because okay, now she understands her menstrual cycle, what else? So it's about how do we help women know themselves? Okay. And it's not just, sometimes the conversation can only do so much. You have to physically show somebody something because you've taught somebody how to wear a pad, but now she cannot afford a pad. So what does she do? So that is, Machi was actually birthed from way goals. Okay. But it had to take a whole different turn. Because initially, I wanted to do my tea for profit. I won't even lie. <laughs> so I'd have cashed out big time. <laughs> like, take the consultation bit separately. Like, the conversation that we've had, do it one-on-one. -on -one, mm -hmm. Go deeper. Women's health. Mm -hmm. Partner with other women health providers. And just do deep, customized, personalized women's health stuff. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that that wasn't the Machi had to take. So I remember having a conversation with God. I was like, I'm taking care of your business. Take care of me. Please take care of me. I need you to take care mm. of me. Mm. And God takes good care of me. So that is that is how Machi sort of came. And okay. Coming into challenges. Machi is a baby. Mm -hmm. So I'm facing more challenges with Machi than I am with with goals. goals. Take personnel, for instance. I hired somebody, went through training. Amazing girl, project coordinator, helping with our project. Lovely lady. I can't hear from her. Mm? <laughs> I don't understand. You call her, she doesn't. Well, I'm in Ghana now, so I'll call her and see. But the team back home calls her, she doesn't pick up. I text, she doesn't respond. Nothing. Up and left. Work for two months. And I've done way goals for six years. This is the first time I'm seeing issue with personnel. Mm. I don't have issue with staff. Ever. Because before you are coming to work with me, I never say people work for me. Because I believe way goals does not belong to me. Way goals is God's business that I am running. Mm. So you don't work for me. You work with, with me you in God's, God's business. business. Mm. So before you are coming to work with me, I've prayed. So I don't have a problem. This is the first time that I face that challenge. And it has thrown me off course. So if you look at Machi, we haven't done anything in months. Because I cannot for the life of me believe that somebody I work with could just get up and go. 
know I'm leaving, know why I'm leaving. What is that about? That's so strange. Very strange. It got to a point, I thought she was sick. Something was wrong with her. Only for me to see her gallivanting on social media, having the time of her life. So that's, that is a new challenge. But mm. it was a good challenge because it made me reconsider how to be a leader. That experience is shaping how I am a leader in a different sense. Mm. So it's all good. So that's one of the challenges in regards to matching. Mm. N- so I do know that um, human resource is one of the biggest challenges for a lot of businesses in Ghana. So I'm not too surprised based on the yeah. stories I've heard and all of that, that somebody can behave like yeah. that. So I would, so you are only human. You ask, ask, did I do something? Yes. So I had a, a mini survey with the people I currently work with. I was like, be honest with me, talk to me. And I do that a lot. Anybody who has worked with me, uh, you can ask them. I do that a lot. Tell me, what am I doing? What are we doing that we're not doing well? What am I personally doing? And they'll come, eh, but we send you a message and you don't respond. Then you come and blast us that we've not done this, we've not done that, blah, 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 mm-hmm. and all of that. So I'm mindful of those things. And I realized the problem wasn't me. So I was like, okay. So human resource with that and Machi. And Machi is an NGO, so we'll always be funding. And I'm, I, I can barely ask people for money. Yeah. I'm shy. <laughs> I'm so shy. Mm. Like, hey, please give me money. I want to go and buy pads for these pads. I'm so shy. So the whole model of Machi is an innovative financing model. So we provide services, events, products for women, like what we're doing. Then whatever we get from it, we go back and feed it into the communities that we put in. Mm. But we haven't been able to build enough. You know, those things thrive on community. And it takes a while to build an organic community in this day and age. So it's just taking a longer time for the initial idea that we had in mind to take off. Mm. So for now, we have to require like donor funding and yeah. all of that. Yeah. So that's also a very big challenge when it comes to that. When it comes to way goals, hmm. the challenges have been different. Mm. They've been interesting. Every year has come with its, its own, own challenges. Its own challenge. Um, from competition from people who are not your competition because the industry is not regulated. Like, you cannot watch videos on YouTube Mm -hmm. and perform a surgery on somebody, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But you can go through a personal experience and help somebody lose weight. weight. Yeah. So now, I'm not just competing against people in the industry. I'm competing against anybody who I can compete against with. But when it comes to that, I don't even see it as a challenge anymore. I don't see it as a challenge anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's, you tell me, you are the guru in this. I don't know if it's a complacent mindset or it's a good mindset. Mm -hmm. But I think I've come to the point where my customers are my customers. Mm And that's it. Mm. I'm doing everything to the best of my ability. So it's so interesting. Somebody DM'd the way it goes to me. I was like, oh, do you know the number of your clients that have texted me to tell me I should help them? I was like, help them. I don't understand. (laughs) (laughs) Why? What does this person do? The person went through a personal journey of weight loss Mm -hmm. and lost amazing weight. I was like, do you know the number of your clients that have DM'd me. No, and so so what so does she want you to do? For like me to, kn- and she, to, he, it's a he actually, and I redirect them that they should come back to you because they are your clients. I'm like, you know what, help them. And I'm not saying it from even being pompous, genuinely help them because we all even seek second opinion. Sometimes you are sick, you go to a doctor, you're not yeah. happy with what they say, you go to another person. Mm-hmm. So if somebody has come to you to help them, the most important thing is that my clients is happy and healthy. So if they didn't get the full extent of the service from you and they've come to you, help them. He was shocked. I don't know what he expected me to say. Thank you. No. <laughs> Thank you for sending people Thank away. <laughs> away. No. So I feel like compi- like in an industry like this is it's hard because it's not regulated. Yes. So you have to be 
very, very intentional mm. about the way you curate your products and your service. And I think I've had this conversation with you before. Mm. The service that I offer is not a need. So, it's like, it's just, so I want to eat healthy, but... but <laughs> <laughs> and there are even there's so many mindset blocks that the customer has and all of that. So, so before you get to the customer being the customer, you've done so much cajoling, yeah. so much. Yeah. So that it's it's a bit it's a challenge in its own way or form. But I feel like for the past few years, we tried our best. We still have a lot more to do, but we've tried our best to create awareness mm. and all of that. Mm. So that's another challenge that we face. And another challenge that I've faced during these goals is the people. Any service provider knows that. Yeah. Working with people is, is the most rewarding but the most difficult thing to mm. do. Mm. Because of how different we are and because of how tailored our services are, Sometimes you have the plan of how you are going to do this person's diet and everything. Then they you do a consult with them. Then they tell you, I don't eat this, I do this, I do that, I do that. Da, da, da. Then you have to go back to the drawing board mm -hmm. and do it again. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to my mother and my cousin. I did a plan for my cousin. My other cousin asked for a plan. And my mother was like, if I wait plan on my way, I was like, we don't do that. <laughs> so fine, they don't have to <laughs> Because yeah. everybody is unique and everybody is different. So it's not a job that I can say I've gotten a hang of things and I can close my eyes and do it in my sleep. Yes, I can do the basic and generic stuff, but everybody is so different. And what makes us also different is the fact that what we are offering you is tailored for True. you. Okay. So it, it's challenging because you can never be too sure. Mm -hmm. And you always have that thing at the back of your mind. Mm. But I know not to work for this person. It worked for this person. Not to work for yes, this person. Yes. I've done my possible best. But genuinely, you want you want it to work. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to just take somebody's money and go. Mm. So those are some And there are also the people that will pay you the money. They can afford it. And they won't do, they won't do the work. <laughs> It's a, a lot of people will say, but you've taken the money. Why is that your headache? But there's just this, this the, the sense of fulfillment you get is in the person exactly. doing the work and getting the exactly. results. It's not really um, about the money. It's not about the money because you can charge them whatever they will pay. But And, you know, it's hard. Eating healthy is hard. Yeah. Sleeping well is hard. Working out is hard. But at the same time, being sick is hard. Mm. Not being able to work. Hard. It's hard. Having like anxiety, all these like depression, everything that comes with you not controlling your mental health is hard. So you have to take your heart. Mm. So sometimes I'm nice, I cajole you. Sometimes I tell you, I've asked the client, Do you want to die? <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> I'm like, You can do it. You are more than capable. You can do it. I've told the client, I'm refunding your money to you this evening. I don't want to. Don't text me ever again. Did it change anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Abba, 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 oh, don't be angry. Don't refund the money. Oh, Abba, don't do that. Abba, don't do that. I'll do it. One week, I saw changes. The person went back to being. Mm. So it's that's why I'm coming back to working with people is challenging. But somebody can also easily stand up. Oh, you're a bad service provider. How can you ask somebody, do you want to die? So finding the balance, you always need like a wisdom of God because somebody, you cannot control the person. When I was a child, I felt like a child, but now you are grown. Yes. I cannot still be babying you. <laughs> but at the same time, you have to be conscious of how you talk to certain people. So I would even call those challenge, like, because I think I found ways and means around them, but in the beginning, they were serious challenges. Mm. Mm. Alrighty, thank you so much, Abba, for um, making space for me in your schedule. Because I knew I know that you are here, you know, on a very short trip. So thank you for coming. Um, I just want to end by saying that I love who you are. Like I love you as an individual. Like the work you are putting in yourself. Like 
just by the some of the conversations we've had off air, I know that you're a genuinely good person. That Thank is just you. looking to <laughs> do better, you know, for herself, for God, and for the people around here. So I love you. And thank you for thank coming. You, thank you so much for having <laughs> me. All right. So how do we find you? Like somebody wants to get their nutrition in check, their wellness in check. How do we find you? Okay. So we're on Instagram. Okay. And we have a website. So our main social media channel is Instagram. But okay. If you don't have Instagram, that's not a problem. Our website, should I just yes. tell them? So our website is theweightgoals.com. Okay. That's it. Okay. And you can just book a consultation. You can send us um, a contact us form if you want us to get back to you. We have our WhatsApp link also directly on the website. Okay. So you can just click that if you want to send us an email. The team is always working around the clock to make sure that we get back to you as quickly as possible. So okay, yeah. that's awesome. I would also link it in the description box. So if you're watching on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or even on Spotify, just check the description box and you find the different links you need to contact Abba. And also know that she's not the only person running the business. She has a full team of well-trained nutritionists that will take good care of you. And so thank you for coming. Thank you too I for will having see me you when on, I see you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>